Hi everyone, um, so this is my first time doing a video like this where I just sit in front of a camera and talk but I just wanted to address something that's been talked about quite a lot in the animal rights movement recently and I just wanted to offer my perspective on it and that's single issue campaigns, um, in other words uh, campaigns that focus on one particular animal rights issue rather than advocate, advocating veganism as a whole so that's things like um, you know anti-fur campaigns, anti-racing campaigns, even the live export demos which happen in Ramsgate um, now there are a lot of people who, like people within this movement, who think that these campaigns are counterproductive. Um, some even go as far as calling them speciesist because they they only focus on one particular issue. Um, now I disagree with this entirely, and I just wanted to um, you know make this video explaining why I why I believe this. Now first of all, um, we need to be pragmatic in terms of like our approach. We need to recognise that there are some some forms of animal exploitation which we could easily end in the next like, couple of decades whereas veganism as a whole creating the vegan planet that we all want to see is going to take a very long time to achieve um, you know we may not even see it during our lifetimes um, you know, there are some days where I wake up and I think you know we could easily achieve a vegan planet in the next 50 years or so then there are other days where I think you know this is going to take a very long time we probably won't even see that change in our lives um, either way um, we need to recognise that if we if we can like abolish certain forms of animal exploitation um, fairly quickly, then why on earth um, wouldn't we want to? If we think about some of the biggest animal rights victories that we've achieved in the last few years, for example, um, fur farming in this country being banned in the early 2000s, um, which was a massive um, success, even though, yes, I know fur is still being sold in the UK, hence why these anti-fur campaigns are still going on, but banning fur farming was celebrated as one of the biggest victories in the history of the UK animal rights movement, and rightfully so, of course. Um, if we also think about the fact that the racing industry is in such a steady decline, we've gone from having God knows how many greyhound tracks everywhere, all over the country, to having just a handful left. Um, also, with regards to the um, live export demos that I mentioned earlier, we've gone from having like between 10 and 20 trucks a day through Dover to between 10 and 20 a year, um, as a rough guess, through Ramsgate. In fact, they're going for a different port now because, because of the protests, the Do port of Dover will no longer allow these trucks to go through. Now all of these successes have happened or are happening because of single issue campaigns and if you were to, you know, so if you're against participating, participating in those kind of campaigns, does that also mean you're against the success we've achieved? Um, if we were to have it your way, then fur farming in the UK would most likely still exist. There would still be God knows how many racing tracks everywhere throughout the country and we would still have between 10 and 20 live export shipments a day through Ramsgate, um, yes, veganism would probably still be rising at the same steady rate that it is today, but we would be nowhere near as close to abolishing some of the other industries that are out there. And if we could end certain forms of animal exploitation whilst in the process of like creating the vegan planet that we all want to see, then why on earth wouldn't we? Now, um, I forgot to mention this at the start, but you. But you don't have to agree with me on this. Um, the purpose on this video is not to say that, you know, this is my position and... Sorry, being interrupted here. Now, um, something I forgot to say at the start of this video is that um, you don't have to agree with me on this. Now, the purpose of this video isn't to, uh, you know, say that this is my opinion and you have to agree with it. Not at all. I'm just simply offering my perspective on it. In fact, there are many people who I attend, like the Cubes of Truth or the Earthlings Experience with on a almost daily basis who disagree with me entirely on this and that, that's completely fine I mean as I always say if I uh, you know if I only ever did act activism alongside people that I agree with 100% of the time I probably wouldn't do activism at all because even I change my own mind on things a lot of the time but um, but now um, as my next main point what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you um, a short clip from uh, this Saturday just gone where I was at a, um, a demo at Mac Cosmetics in uh, London. Now this was more of an outreach style event than an actual protest. But in this video I'm explaining how like when like talking about certain forms of animal exploitation you can actually um, bring veganism into that conversation. So I'll just play you that video clip now. How's it going, Connor? Yeah, essentially we just had another vegan there. We started the, um, we started the conversation and she thought Mac was free and then we 
obviously told her that yeah. they're selling the Chinese market that they're not. See, this then, is, yeah. And then she said she was, like, I mentioned, we mentioned that we're against all forms of animal cruelty, including, like, for food and that kind of thing. She said, oh, that's why I'm vegetarian. Okay. So I thought, right, that's it, that's it. Now's, now's an opportunity. So uh, we spoke a bit about veganism, and she said that she has a few health problems that she think might hold her back. So I gave her some information. I talked to her about the Challenge 22, which will obviously help her around Perfect. those problems. And she was a really reasonable person. She was really shocked by, well, well I say shocked. She knew what was going on here. She just wasn't aware that Mac were a part of it. And she was yeah. shocked at the fact that they're able to mislead so many customers. Oh, yeah. Which is, I was, I was going to raise that point, Max. Max have, uh, have, have used uh, some of their marketing strategies um, have been centred around um, cruelty free products when yeah. essentially they're not because they still um, they still sell in the Chinese market exactly just, uh, one more thing I'll say and there are quite a few people within the vegan community who don't support single issue campaigns like this one because they think we should be focusing our time on generic vegan outreach mm-hmm. and the thing is whenever we're doing anything like this whether it be for cosmetic animal testing for racing there are always opportunities to bring veganism into it and do some vegan outreach Absolutely. that's exactly what we've just done here you've done a bit of that yourself earlier so as Emma so any form of animal rights activism will have opportunities to bring in that vegan message and it's just about utilising as many different forms of activism as possible spot on man Thank now you, man. as I explained in that video um having conversations around certain forms of animal exploitation which most people are already against anyway like the fur trade like animal testing if they don't believe it's necessary um then that does open an opportunity to bring veganism into the conversation because you can then say things like well if you're against the killing of animals for clothing or for research then why are you not against killing animals for the sake of food um, so it, it definitely does open that opportunity um, and also something I didn't mention in that live stream um, that was going out at the time was a lot of the time non-vegans will attend th- these single issue campaigns um, like the, you, for example the Yulin Dog Meat Festival um, seems to be made up mostly of non-vegans as far as I'm aware um, and that is a great opportunity to, bring, to say to them like you know if you care enough about this issue to actively go out and fight for it why not extend your circle of compassion towards other towards other beings, towards cows, pigs and chickens? Now anyone that attends these single issue campaigns on a on a regular basis will understand how how these opportunities do arise. And in fact most of the people who criticise these kind of campaigns have most likely never been to one in their life, or maybe they've been to one and then tarnish all single issue campaigns as the same based on that. Um, now my third main point that I'm going to make is the, is the bit of a hypocrisy amongst those who claim to be against single issue campaigns because whenever people say that they're against these campaigns I will then say to them something like does this mean you're against like hunt stabbing or other forms of direct action um, because technically these are single issue campaigns aren't they but then these people will then say no that's different because they're physically saving animals at the time But what difference does that make whether you're saving animals at the time or if you're saving them in the long run through greater education um you know which will eventually which will in turn lead to a decrease in the demand a decrease in the supply that's going to save animals as well so what so what difference does that make it seems a bit of a non-point to me to be honest and as i said at the start you don't have to agree with me me on this at all but this is just my perspective on the matter and although whilst to say this the one thing i won't accept the one thing i I don't like to see which I unfortunately am seeing quite a lot is people actively putting down these campaigns actively encouraging other people not to attend them especially at the moment in the lead up to the London Fashion Week protests which are going to be happening I think next weekend I've seen a lot of people saying that oh you're speciesist if you go to this these demos or you know these demos do not help the movement at all you should not be going to them now the one thing I absolutely despise in any instance is activism police people telling you what forms of activism you should be doing what forms of activism you shouldn't be doing um the way i see it is that as long as you're out there doing something then that then you have my full respect i mean i take part in like the anonymous for the voiceless cubes of truth um and and the earthlings experience as well those are like some of my my main forms of activism but at the same time I am one of Cage Nationwide's biggest supporters. Um, shout out to Mike and Rita and everyone else involved in Cage for all the amazing work you do for the Greyhounds. Because um, 
you know, if you're focusing on these types of issues, then you are helping to bring that form of animal exploitation to an end as quickly as you can. And why would we, as people who care about animals, be against that? If I could, you know, if I could bring the fur trade to an end right now, I'm not going to say no because that would be speciesist. I'd say hell yes because that's going to save save animals' lives. And I just, you know, I can't understand this way of thinking. Like, like I said, you don't have to agree with me on this, but I honestly don't understand this way of thinking. Um, and actually, I'm gonna gonna mention something else as well. I, I said earlier that um, you know there are so, there's a real hypocrisy in those who often criticise single issue campaigns. Now, one of these who's quite a big name is Gary Francione. He's always going. He, I mean, he even goes as far as criticising like the Cubes of Truth for being for having too much of a focus on like methods of slaughter which is absolutely not the case at all anyone who's ever been to any of these events will know that it does it's not about the methods and yet at the same time like every day he posts about dogs who are in shelters who need homes is that not a single issue is that not a single issue campaign so again like there's a real hypocrisy going on there um the way i see it is do whatever form of activism you think suits you whether it be like generic vegan outreach at like cubes or other things or or wherever wherever or if you're focusing solely on the fur trade or greyhound racing that kind of thing then that's completely fantastic as well because you're you're out there you're spreading the message and we as activists need to support those who are doing whatever they can for the movement now um I think that's just about everything um, I have to say. Um, as I said, this is the first time I've ever done a video like this where I just sit in front of the camera and talk. Um, hence the messy desk in the background. I do apologise for that. But um, yeah, it probably won't be the first, it probably won't be the last time I do a video like this because there are a lot of things in the community that I think need to be talked about. So yeah, until next time, see you all soon. Hope you have a nice day.